Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, Madeo. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We will pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you can subscribe, but if you want to see the exclusive stuff, you got to be a member. Because y'all always see us on the street and be like, I love what y'all doing, dap us up. Man, keep pushing. How can we support the brand? Well, this is how you can support the brand. Under each and every video, including this one right down here in the description section, there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link. It takes you through the process. Thank you in advance. And we love you. We love the support. Thank you. Hey, man, this one. Hey, listen. I've been waiting on this interview right here, man. Some interviews, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I'll do that one. But this guy right here, man, listen, man, when it come down to culture, you know, the nigga from New Orleans, too, I didn't even realize that that gave the nigga the icing on the cake. I was looking for the nigga anyway, man. <laughs> Jason Mitchell is in the building. Yes, sir. Stop playing. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. No, Bro, thank excited. you for coming, nigga. No, too easy. Too man, easy. let's get too to easy. it, man. I'm going to tell you, man. Like I said, this is inc this right here was very important for me mm -hmm. because of, we done interviewed everybody from Lonzo. Everybody talked about that damn movie. We done, right. and I talked to a lot of different people that played part in Some people didn't like what, the way they did it, mm. which some is crazy. Did. Yeah, you niggas did some fly stuff. We gonna get into it, guys. Yeah. Check it, man, Mr. Mega. Let's go. Okay, I like to know you as a person. Yes, not always what you do. Yes. So, um, you were born in Germany, from what I understand. Yes, yes, I was born in Würzburg, Germany. My sister was born in Kitzigan. I'm an army brat. You know okay. what I mean? Oh, my so mama, you yeah, around. my mama, she <laughs> fell out of college and shit, and was like, "Fuck that, I need to, I need a change." You know, so she she got in the army. And um, how long were you in Germany for? Oof, just a few years. Like I don't, I don't really remember it that much. Um, I moved to New Orleans before I like. I don't yeah, really have so to. So you can't German. speak German. Can man. you no, say no, 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 no. you got good Morgan or some nigga a Vito saying something? Nigga? You know what was crazy? <laughs> I, I moved to Belgium when I was in the second grade because we okay. came back to New Orleans because my mom and daddy ended up splitting up or whatever. So we came back to New Orleans till I was in like the second grade, and then we moved to Belgium till I was in like the fifth or sixth grade, something mm -hmm. like that. So I know more French. Oh really? Mm -hmm. pull up room from. I don't know no French. Jack. We, we, nigga. Okay, 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 okay. What did you just say? I speak French. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nothing too crazy. You know, Not I know too crazy. enough to get me around. Maybe buy a baguette. Oh, okay. <laughs> to, rom it. to romance a girl? Yeah. Oh, you, know, you know the females love French, French now. I was. You knew how to talk to a woman. Yeah, but you know, listen. They like that American pitch when you're over there, don't you? You know, I... I don't know if I'm way too American or way too, you know, but some things I'm not quite used to, you know. And in France, they not really big fans of deodorant. Oh. I heard that. Yeah, it's, it's like it's kind of like that in Germany, too. I'm talking about beautiful women okay. smell like a dumpster. So they Whoa. do. So it is Damn. fun. But so, from what I heard, they're not a fan of deodorant, but they like that natural scent. They yeah, they love into it. it. They into it. They love they into it. it. But what is kind of interesting is that... Uh, they don't mind being naked, like in public. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean. So I it's like that. you know, like where so we that used is to real. live was like on on posts, right, on government right. housing. But then right across the fence, you know, it's people who like, you know, they they just regular homeowners and they just be in their backyard, just naked. Like, and how old were you whatever. when you were there? Um, I, I, how old are you when you're in the second grade? So you were a kid. Were yeah, a kid. I was a kid. But were we, you we peeking over the fence? Were you oh, peeking absolutely. over? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm seeing all the French see. cities. <laughs> yeah. yep. Oh, that's Maybe crazy. Maybe rocking the '70s bush and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. how old were you when your parents split up? Because you said you came back. Was your dad also army? Yes. Oh, yes, so they yes. both was military. Yeah, my dad was a Green Beret. He was like a fucking war machine. You wow. know what I mean? But he also, you know, he just had a lot of scars as a person because he, um. He unalived himself when mm -hmm. I was 15. And I started finding out like a lot about his past after he died, you know, because he had burn scars from like the top of his thighs wow. to the top of his feet. But you didn't know all this as a kid? Well, I, I did. I knew about the scars, but I never knew how he got them because he, he always would 
tell us random stories and we like this nigga lying you know when you told mm-hmm. this person this story this person this story you know so me and my sister knew that he was lying but we never knew how it happened for real but when he passed we found out that he was taken from my grandmother at like seven or eight years old cause she threw a hot pot of grease on him wow. you know what I mean so he yeah it changed him I think he joined the army to just try. to kill motherfuckers like you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah, that was yeah. the mind frame he was in he wow. just had a lot built up in him did he mm-hmm. go to war or anything like that when he was over there in the army? Do you know that? Um, I, I I just know he was a Green Beret, and I know them mm-hmm. people. Uh, you know they he was a paratrooper and shit. Like he didn't he didn't see some action. Yeah, the reason why I say that because a lot of people they talk about the trauma after going over there with war and you have to come back. Because right. I had a friend that I remember she ended up divorcing her husband because she said and she was military too. But right. so I would think that they would be able to talk to each other and understand. Right. But she said he started doing some crazy stuff and you know yeah. just couldn't do any. And yeah. when she broke it off, he ended up trying to stalk her. So she had to do the whole restraining order, all of that oh, sort yeah, of yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the same thing with my dad. Like, really? like my mom. Had to slip away first, you know, and she would, like, come visit us at school and that type of shit. And she was like, you know, I just want y'all to know I'm not trying to leave y'all and X, Y, Z. You know, and then um, she ended up bringing us to New Orleans. <clears throat> so who raised y'all? Because if she my was... Mama, go- my mom, well, my, she okay. left us with my dad at first, but she okay. had to get away because they was getting into it too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, when she did end up bringing us to New Orleans, my daddy, of course, knowing... The whole family, you know what I mean? And a lot of people used to be scared of my daddy, too. So, you know, niggas, he shivering, but he pull up, you know? Right. Wow. Yeah, I remember he had a, a a black Trans Am. Boy, everybody used to be like, oh, shit, here come Mitch, this nigga. You know, and he used to be really, like, be looking for my mama. You know what I mean? And I don't know if it was necessarily about her or just trying to see us, but... Let me ask Everywhere you this. we went, that nigga would show up, even if it was in another country. Is wow. Rob, Rob mm-hmm. Kazi your brother? Rob Kazi is my baby mama brother. But okay. you might as well say we brothers. Like, that's okay. that's my dog, dog. Like, since the 10th grade, we've been locked in. Because I actually met their oldest brother first. Okay. Because he is, like, a hell of a builder. Like, most of New Orleans East, they brother built, right? He was, okay. like, one of the first millionaires I ever met in my life. <clears throat> and um, he built Bay Bay Studio. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, when we was all, like, because everybody thought we was going to rap. We used to be battle rapping and shit in high school and shit. That's how me and Rob met. So, um, how old were you when you met him? Ooh, I had to be like, I don't know, maybe 15, 15, 16 years old, you know, and that was my dog. We were super locked in, but I ended up meeting his sister way later on in life. I had no idea that they were family. I fell in love. Mm-hmm. Wow. They got, yeah, because it's 10 of them. Wow. Ooh. Tommy, real niggas is like comedian, like is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That's like, my dude. And so you and and, and that's that's something I, when you kept saying that, like, dang, I, he ain't talking about. It. So I guess y'all just just tight. Yeah, mm-hmm. we super 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 tight. You know what I mean? Like I I love Rob to death. Like that's that's really my brother. What'd you, you know think what when mean? he came up with that with that character? And Tommy real nigga. I Did thought it was the funniest it? shit ever. Yeah. Cause see me, I'm real hard on like comedians because low key I've, I've always wanted to do comedy my whole life anybody who really know me know I'm a funny ass person and I like I laugh my way through life that's my shit but it just so happened that I'm I'm good at drama so I be dying and crying in all my movies I'm like nigga please comedy <laughs> yeah. me please you yeah. know what I mean but um you know I went one way and Rob sort of went the other you know and he he, he put in a lot of work dog just performed in front of like 15,000 people wow. I was like nigga I was, I was on the other end of the phone crying like I was there That's you know big. but yeah it's a beautiful thing man to see where he's come Wow! You know, shout out to Rob Cousy. You say you go through life sometimes, you know, co- um, doing a comedy or being comedic. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes people do that because of trying to um, depress, so ex- yeah, depress some of their um, depression, right. some of their the things that they've been through in life. Absolutely, it's better to laugh about it rather than think about it type right. of thing. Right. So going back to when you found out that your father had um, unalived himself. Mm-hmm. Um, how did that affect you at 15 years old? You know, him and my sister had a, a situation at a PF Chang's. I'll never forget this shit. It was like, they got to arguing. It got physical. Like, it was all bad. And that was the first, well, that was the last time I saw my dad, right? And I think, um, I was just so disappointed in both of them. At the time that I like, I, it was hard for me to process. So once I found out he unalived himself and like wrote me this letter and shit, I'm like, nigga, 
we could have just fucking talked about this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was more angry. My sister took it super hard, I think, because she she felt like she was kind of the main reason, you know, that that led up to that situation and all of this shit. She blamed herself a lot. But me, I it took a long time for me to process it. I, I didn't cry, none of that. I remember coming downstairs and my mom, my mom used to work overnight. So I'm coming downstairs and she cooking breakfast. And, like, that shit only happened, like, during standardized testing. You know what I mean? Or if she really <laughs> needed me to do something. You know what I mean? So, immediately, when I seen her cooking, I'm like... What's wrong? Yeah, you know, what's going on? She was like, you know your daddy killed himself, right? I was like, news. This is news to me. I had, I had no idea. Oh, so that's, <laughs> how, that's just, how you found out. Right. I was like, mm. Definitely had no idea. But I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to go back upstairs. You know, actually, it's funny. Because before she said that, I was like... You know, I don't really feel like going to school today. She was like, "You don't have to." And I was like, "That really, that really." <laughs> like, in my mind, work. I'm like, "I should do this more often." You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but she was like, "Yeah." She told me that after, and I was like, "Well, that." And you that, went back to your room, and you didn't reason. even cry nothing when I you didn't went back cry to your room. Nothing, you know. But I, um, now that I look at it, it was the moment that I started to not necessarily rebel, but. You know how you be in, in this world, like as a teenager, when you like feel like I'm gonna take my own advice, mm. like I'm running this shit now. That's that's kind of how I felt. You know what I mean? Cause my mom, when she, I mean, she did the best that she could. You know what I mean? We didn't have stuff that we wanted, but we had stuff that we needed. You right. know what I mean? But still, I was like, fuck it. This is, you know, I I, I sold a little weed and shit before that, but after that, I was like, no, nah, nigga, it's, it's up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm outside now. Did you ever you know? go through any counseling or anything for it? You know what's yeah. crazy? I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. Like, they offered me, like, a uh, some free therapy sessions and shit, but I was like, nah, I'm straight. We'll pray about it. Like, I'll uh-huh. be all right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Even, even when I had, like, because my best friend was murdered. And that was kind of how I found acting, just trying to find some new friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, they offered it to me then, and I was like, no, nah, y'all trying to give me a snitch. You know what I mean? I'm going to leave out this motherfucking handcuffs. i never forget, like, how I felt. Like, I was just so afraid. But when I did start going to therapy and shit, I was like, man, for it's the first few so sessions, bad. I'm like, I'm wasting my money. I ain't doing nothing but crying and venting. Yeah. I ain't got no advice yet, you know? But it just... It, um, it started to show me how much I really had on my mind and really was, you know, um, just trying to sweep under the rug. You know what I'm saying? Like, black people, man, we be fucked up sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know so what I mean? We just try not to talk about it. So it helps to go to counseling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even if it's just to say certain stuff out loud. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you don't realize that um, your train of thought might be off. You know what I mean? Like, your your truth might not be the truth. Exactly. You know? So sometimes it's important to get stuff off your chest and just say it out loud. You know what I mean? Like, I like for instance, I used to blame my mom a lot. Like, man, this bum-ass life you gave us and what the fuck? You know what I mean? I used to be mad. You know what I mean? I remember being in jail mad at my mama. Like, what the fuck? You know? So, like, when I started looking at it for what it was, it was like, bro, like, I had everything that I needed. Yeah. I never had to hustle for a meal. That wasn't it. My mama wasn't that type of mama. You know what I mean? My mama wasn't outside in the clubs and selling pussy. That wasn't her. She did 20 years in the military and then on top of that raised three beautiful kids. You might as well say by herself. Wow. Man, you know that, I mean? that, and that's something that's we see in the hour. You, you, a lot of women stepped up to the plate Fact. because of the way that things transpire. You know right. what I mean? Right. And it's just dope to, you know, know that we got some strong black women that really, you know what I mean? My Absolutely. mom was one, you know what I'm saying? My wife is one. My daughter is going to be one for sure, you know, and it's something different in them because they create life, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. And so they dope now. They don't yeah. get it twisted. They dope They're now. the real gods of the earth. This is know? a man's world, the though. But that's the part yeah, I yeah. can never... it wouldn't be nothing without a woman. Without women. Without a woman. But, yeah. you know? but the part that I could never understand, because ever since we started doing this, I'm always, the person who's sitting right here is always the person who's telling me that my mama raised me, my daddy was over here, right. whether he was in my life or he wasn't because he was roaming the streets. Right. I'm like, why is, only one person said my daddy raised me. Mm-hmm. But it's always the mom, why is that so? Why is it not both parents, although you're not together, or why is it not the daddy raising you? Especially for boys. I always feel like boys, when they reach a certain age, the daddy needs to go ahead and get him. Right, right, right. Facts. 
you know, I hate to get all conspiracy theory on y'all, but like black people is really strong as hell. We super smart. A lot of that, you know, so I think um, in order to make sure we because as long as we in a place where like we need you white people, mm -hmm. we always going to be fucked up. You see what I'm saying? And we always going to be unstable and we always going to have to give our IPs to them no matter what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a black woman invented the tampon, a black man invented the air condition. Where would we be without these things? Right. <laughs> But when you really look at it, right, you got, if you take the black man out the household and now you, you put the, the, the mama on drugs or in a situation to do whatever she got to do for money, now you got children unable to process and unable to really think for real. And this is how they keep ripping our homes apart. And that's what it's all about. Because if you ain't got a leader in the household, it's a wrap. Definitely it's a wrap. It's so they take your daddy, put him in jail, put your mama on drugs, and then send the kids to the street. And then what do you get? The same process once again. Wow. You know, man. like I just was telling you, I just started believing in marriage. Well, I, I'm going to be <laughs> honest with you, man. It's something that I believe the structure is needed. And like I told you off camera, you know, family, you know what I mean? Right. Like grandchildren. I started thinking about that. Right. The, it was a, 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 second, a second wind that kicked in. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was right. like, Nah, I gotta do this because we can't. We gotta break the cycle, right? Where we got our kids being raised by different people and all mm -hmm. that. We gotta stop that, bro. Right. And that's what made me stand up and say, you know what? I got it right. I, I'm older now. I'm thirty something. I need to do this, and right. I need to make sure I do it right. Right. You but not what? only exactly. that, but for these people to get whether counseling or go to God or whatever to to retrain their thinking before they pass on that knowledge to their kids, mm -hmm. because if they don't know how to um, process stuff properly or how to excel, just like I heard you mention in an interview, you know, I didn't know how to buy property, I didn't know how to buy this, whatever. Right. But it's educate your kids on certain things so they don't end up like you. Exactly, exactly. I told my daughter, I was like, listen, I be having some serious conversations with my daughters, and sometimes my mom will be looking at me like, why would you say that to these kids? You need to. Because you got the game fucked up if you think the internet ain't going to tell your kids what That's it is. Right. That's you right. You only get so much mileage on that little vagina, my love. You need to make sure you're using it properly. You know what I'm That's saying? Real. Different things like that, they need to hear from their daddy. Yeah. I'm not here to make sure you find a man like me. I'm here to make sure you find a man that's better than me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You need to make better decisions than your daddy made. You know, but I always wished when I was a kid that that my parents would listen to me, you know, because I knew something different than they did. Like, you know, like I remember I went through this phase where my mom was like, are you getting bullied at school? And I was like, uh, actually, I got jumped by some niggas. Now they're trying to shoot me. And she was like, uh, don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Like, she was stuck. She had right. no, like, she, she just didn't understand. That. Exactly. And it was like something that she kind of tried to make into like a joke. And I was like, nah, this, this is real shit. You know what I mean? And it got to a point where I had to leave my mama out of a whole portion of my life because shit was, was real. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like that when she was young. Motherfucker could ca go outside, catch a fade, but you live. You live to fight another day. You know what I mean? And yeah, Joe Witherspoon just I, said Yeah, because I was like, how y'all jump me and not y'all trying to kill me? You know what I mean? I was confused like a motherfucker. I wasn't, I wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, damn, y'all ain't get enough trying to beat my ass? You know what I mean? They but it was... It was a weird space to be in, right? Mm -hmm. But on the opposite hand, I remember that me and my grandfather used to get into it a lot because he would always do snail mail and like pay his bills the snail mail style. And they used to be blowing me. I'm like, you know what year it is? You know, you don't you just get a debit card. You pay the shit over the phone, whatever. Even if you want to pay by electronic check, like you no longer have to fill all of this stuff out. And he would always get me to fill it out and be looking over my shoulder like, like man, like, why, you, why are you micromanaging me? It's like, yeah. this ain't nothing to fill out and do. I used to be pissed. I found out when I was in my late 20s, I had to be like 28, that my grandfather didn't know how to write nothing but his name. Wow. Wow, that's why. And he used to be blown away by all the things that I could write in my penmanship and you know what I mean? But he would never Tell you. have that conversation with me. Mm -hmm. If you would have had that conversation with me, I would have. we would have had a totally different relationship. 
Yeah, yeah, and and I think a lot of time it is communication barriers because yes. of the way that they was brought up. Right. One thing I was even earlier, like I was talking about the marriage thing. I didn't get it right at first. I got kids before I met my wife. You know right. what I mean? I take care of them just the same. But at some point, just going back to that marriage thing, you still got to make it right, and you live it in front of your grandkids right. and your kids so they can see. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because they can see it. I know you talked about teaching them. But what they can see you do is way more important. Exactly. They're going to do what you do when they see you do it. Exactly. No matter well, how you look at speak. it, whether you leave in somebody or you don't believe in marriage, they will subconsciously not believe in marriage. Right. You see? Right. <laughs> they exactly. don't even know why they don't believe in it. If they, if you are a person who does a certain thing a certain way, your kids automatically adapt a lot of time because they love you. And then sometimes they love you so much they hate you and it makes them become you. Exactly. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So I mean, that's, that, that's the whole game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But just like you mentioned, you said just six months ago, you, you just started believing in marriage. Right. Why? What happened? Um, Got some fire. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she came home with that two weeks. <laughs> no, I think um, at first I didn't believe in marriage because I had never really seen a marriage work. You know what I mean? I had slept with people's wives. I had watched their wives creep around. and You know what I mean? And it would scare the shit out of me. Like, I would never... Like, I can't imagine what it's like to be a man. You busting your ass, working, doing whatever. You know what I mean? You done got deployed to somewhere else and and wifey running off with, mm -hmm. with, with, with Jason. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? So it just used to scare me. But then I started to look at it like, there's a different sort of, I think, aura that a man has when he have a wife. I think it's a different poise in a man when he have a wife like the more I get into the word you know what I mean and the more I start to hear from God I realize what a woman is to a man because to be truthful this is a man's world but y'all a lot fucking smarter than us you know what I mean y'all have a, a way of um, wrapping y'all arms around our whole being and without that you will forever be short of what life could be so, you know, I think um, I'm just in this process now of making sure that I'm attracting the type of person that I want in my in my sector. You yeah, know don't waste I mean? time. Right. Don't waste time because a lot of people will be put there and they'll be really, it's a waste of time. They yeah. look like, I talk to a lot of women that look like my wife or I got to my wife. You right. don't want to hear me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. No, I feel no, that. Like, it, it, you go through these phases trying to find the right person mm -hmm. and you be out here just looking and you can run through them. You run down through mm -hmm. them. But at the end of the day, it just be a waste of time, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you can't get that back. No, you can't get it back. How many bodies you got, my nigga? And how, much, and how much money you spent. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah. yeah. I, I've also, you know, like, since, like, because I always used to tell myself, like, I'm going to be something one day, right? And if I don't find love before I become what I want to become, fuck it. Yeah. Because I'm going to never be able to trust you. Because now, because, I mean, I understand that no woman wants somebody that's broke and just yeah. sitting on their ass. But also... Like, I'm, I've been literally in the middle of fucking, and they'd be like, Jason, make me famous, Jason. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, you for real? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, what is yeah. what happening right now? Like, yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. You serious? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, are you, <laughs> you, you be hanging around somebody for five or six months, and then you find out through a conversation that they having with somebody else, like, you really want to be an actor? Yeah. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, you know, you just... Everybody always got an angle, you know? Mm -hmm. So I you better know it. I'm telling you, that's why I started ending up in like polygamous relationships and shit. I've been in like real serious polygamous relationships. How did that work out? Uh, it was great until it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, it was, was great for you because you weren't well. ready to settle down. So that's why it was great for you. Well, it's not even just that, right? Because my philosophy used to be no person is perfect, mm -hmm. right? Like... For instance, you might have a person who is a complete introvert. They really don't fuck with people like that. You know what I mean? But they could cook. And they don't mind being home. And they don't mind being what you need to vent to. You could laugh with this person. You know? Then you got this other person who is a social butterfly. Mm -hmm. You know? 
who gonna fuck you better than anybody else, but you can't trust it as far as you can, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so I felt like if I had a couple of different women. You trying to have I would make the perfect. <laughs> I would have the perfect woman. Cause my thing was, I, cause by nature, I don't believe that people are. Um, Monogamous? Yes. I knew that's what you're gonna say. <laughs> Not by nature. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, it, it takes extra effort to be that. So, um, a lot of men, we just got soft feelings. We ain't gonna say it, but it is what it is. My heart is broke. You wouldn't gave it to somebody else. Oh, Lord. You know what I mean? I'm about to jump mentally. So, I feel like if I just confronted that by telling you, listen, I'm not even looking for that. I don't want monogamy. I don't want all of that. Like, I want something real. Don't, you ain't got a lot of me. But there's also questions that I'm not gonna ask. Right? So, if... If I'm sleeping with the both of y'all, I know for a fact that y'all probably do have something else going on. I'm just not gonna ask, mm. you know? And it's, um, it was working for me for a little while. You know what I'm saying? It, it really was, but no matter, you how, no matter how you look at it, you know, the more the, the, uh, the love starts to build with these people, the more that they feel like they want you for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A so woman it, fall. Right. I always tell I always tell any male that I, I'm like, if you treat a woman good, no matter how much you don't want something serious, she going to fall. Right. You open the door, you do this, do right. stuff for her that no other man does. Right. What you expect? Right. Wow. And see, I'm a classic gentleman, and I love to cook. I love to, you know, you can ask anybody who hang around me. I'm a natural, like, um, person who likes to serve. Maybe it's just a New Orleans thing. You know, we like to put our arms around people. Well, you know, if you go to New Orleans during Mardi Gras, you one two things will never deny you is food and shelter, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. You know, it could be a random motherfucker. Hey, you, baby, uh-huh. hey, you look a little, you know, you look a little parched. Can we? Can, can I get you something to drink? And it's, that's just how we are. I seen you on Vlad TV, uh-huh. uh, and he said uh, he was. Uh, I went to the restaurant down there and I called Commander's Palace mm-hmm. or something like that, and I was like, okay. You know, but I'm a GW Finn type nigga. You know, GW Finn do slap. I ain't gonna lie, GW Finn slap. I like the biscuits when they come out. You, you know, know, they set them up there and they hot. Right. You know, like you got do got a different way that y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Down yeah. there, the food is different, and and the it's really the culture. I love the culture. It's the culture. It's yeah. the way you guys. You know, I love New Orleans for the way that they. You know, they embrace. I've always had a thing. The, for New Orleans people, period. Yeah. But not only New Orleans, Louis, Louisiana. Yeah. yeah, I like a lot, a lot yeah. of Louisiana. I used to, you know, I used to go score with Penn Streetport, and I just keep on in the money. I was one of those type dudes. I know that's right. <laughs> but anyway, so like they got them Buddha and balls in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you was in the streets just for a little bit, like, like, what was that like? You know, hustling down there, trying to make ends um, meet. Did you think you were gonna come up? What was your was it just weed or did you get all the way into the no, house? I got I got all the way. You down. got all the way down. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me it was just it was just the culture. It was normal. How it much did you get feel... up to? Come on now, give it up, Jason. Let's be real. Did you get up to a big an ounce? Did you what, what did you get up to? Mm, I see how serious I, like, you are. Like I have a man. Okay, okay. It so you decent. you was decent. You were running around with with, with some money. Yeah, I was, I was decent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, so you, you basically, you know, could have got caught up in that. Oh, absolutely. Because it's a light, it's a rush. People don't realize that. Oh, yeah, being it's your more own of a boss. Rush. Yeah, it's a Listen, rush. Give, being able to give yourself a raise, being able to work yeah. your own hours, it was like, what? This is, it's the shit. I'm not going to lie to you. You know what I mean? It was, it empowered me in a different way. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I know, it just it's a made rush. me feel like, cause really, really, I ain't gonna lie. It really, really started popping for me once Hurricane Katrina hit. Okay. Cause I realized, um, cause see, a lot of people from New Orleans started robbing everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They ain't had shit, you know. But I, you know, I met a couple of people who was like, right this way, nigga. Let me what you need, and they were showing love, and I yeah. was like, what? It's like that, you know? Yeah. And um. At first, I used to be a little fucked up about it, like, damn, I'm punishing my community. But then you meet some people who be like, fuck it. Nigga, I smoke crack. This is what I do. Yeah. I know I got seven kids, but guess what? If you don't sell it to me, I'm going Go down right there and get it. Yeah. It just is what it is. So, I'm, you know what I mean? So, it got to the point where it was like, I love my J's. I love I loved all of them and respect all of them as people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you might got this habit. 
But your habit paid my bills, and you also a real person. You know what I mean? Going I can trust them more shit. than more than the niggas Facts. that they were either hustling or was, uh, was robbing on the street anyway. So Facts. I would ride with them and hang with them before I hang with them other niggas anyway. Bro, I'm telling you, it got to the point where like I really used to because I had a little spot and I used to just go post up and just be in her house. You right? know what I mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> I know y'all gonna be having motherfuckers zipping in and out of here. You know what I mean? And y'all doing y'all thing, and I just come with my little yeah. <laughs> You know, take my little calls, do my little drop offs, and I'll be done by the end of the night. Did you have any close calls where you thought, "Damn, I might have been out of there"? Like, like somebody pulled up. Like I, I've seen the, I had the sirens to pull up behind me, and they weren't looking for me, but I had some, and I was like, ah. "Oh yeah, I, I done tossed a whole whoop like that before." <laughs> In the drain, <laughs> police kept going. Yeah. That's right. Did you go back and try to find it? Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Niggas for outside sure. looking at me like, "We saw you throw it, nigga. You don't think we went and got that shit? Yes. <laughs> nigga looking right in my face like, we got your shit, boy. It's over with. And so don't even ask. It <laughs> it's something that and, and shout out to Phase on Love. It's something that he always say. He be like, you be hearing certain people. He always refer to Jay Z, but mm -hmm. like they tell the good stuff, but they don't never tell them parts that. Make you know, man. Listen, you understand what I'm saying? when you listen. when you know, yeah, it be some tough spots in there, yeah. It's that you gonna put if if I'm a rapper, I'm not a rapper, but if I was rhyming, right? Oh, them tough spots gonna be where I'm gonna lay at because I know right. already ain't nobody got them stories, right? Right, and it, it see, it's, it's crazy, right? Like the first time I went to jail, I'm thinking to myself. Well, if I beat this case, can y'all can y'all give me my shit back? Cause now I got to start from zero. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Now I'm back to zero. Nothing but naked. This is crazy. Wow. I got to bond myself out. Plus, I y'all done took all my money. Sent me to send me to jail with photocopies of my money. <laughs> I'm like, what what I'm what I'm gonna do with this? You know what I mean? Like, so how long were you in jail for the first time? Um, and how listen, old were I, you? I had a few dollars, so I was I was, you was, I was out. out of that motherfucker okay. quick. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we get I, was, I was out they of that motherfucker quick. They get you know? out of that thing. But I was I was like nineteen the first time I went. You know, I actually got caught in Brownwood, Texas. Wow, mm. wow. Trying to make my way to Albany. Country. Wow, it, but it happens. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's a part of the game. But well, let me show you how God works, right? Everybody who really know me know I have like a fear of public bathrooms. I'm not. I'm not fucking with that, for real. You know what I mean? It's just, my body just don't react the same, you know? So um, I'm on the road, and I'm like, damn. Because this this back when nigga had to print the map quest directions out and shit, you know? So yeah. I know, I'm knowing I'm like maybe 45 to an hour away, but I'm like, well, I ain't going to make it. Stomach rumbling, right? So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to pull over, use the bathroom, and to distract me, I'm going to roll me one. And by the time I end up... Finish smoking that one, I'm going to be where I need to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I figured all this out in my mind. So I pull over to the gas station. I get the blunt. I go in the bathroom. The light switch is gone off the wall. Damn. Ooh, it's dark in there. Mm. Definitely not. I'm, all, I'm not rocking with I'm this. I'm not fucking with this, right? Yeah. But you know when you be on the road, like in them country places, they got a gas station on one side of the road, gas station on the other That's side. That's right. So I could see the gas station. So, ooh, but now my body's like, nigga, we got to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I done jumped in the car, whoop, threw that bitch in and drive quick. I got pulled over for no seatbelt in between them two gas oh, stations. Oh, damn. Uh-uh. That's what I was going to try and, and tell even me, if you sit told your ass down. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Sit your ass you down. You would have think that if you told him the reason why, that he would have just let you go. No, right. no, no, no. I ain't got no. shit no more. That motherfucker turned me to pimp my ride. <laughs> wow. <laughs> man, I, I have a lot of uh, actors, man, that I, I deal with, Columbus Short and all these guys, man. Mm -hmm. Like, when it come down to getting in the character to go into these scenes, man, like, mm -hmm. what what's that word them niggas be using? I'm a... Uh, method actor. I'm a method actor. You know what yeah, I mean? Method like, are you, a, are you a method actor? Or are you a guy that just... Basically, how do you get? You can ready? turn it on and off in no time. Yeah, I yeah, and I, I kind of pride myself on that too because method acting is dangerous. That's what yeah, I, we've heard. It's we've heard dangerous. That. I mean, like it can ruin relationships. I mean, he Ledger unalive himself after doing the Joker. It's hard to snap out of that shit sometimes. Me, the way I build my characters is all based on opinion. You know what I mean, like. The way you feel about life is because of your experiences. Right. So if you build these experiences for that person, even if you got to make that shit up, it helps you 
understand how a person thinks and why they think like they do, why they react in certain situations like that. So for me, I like to do all of that building before I even get on set because by the time I reach set, I'm taking direction as that person. Wow, I want to ask you about, you know, I kind of feel bad for uh, 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 Lil Easy when, when y'all, you took the part from him. I know y'all cool now, <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> it did, it seemed kind of, you know, I, Ice Cube's son was in that old shade. I'm like, this would have been perfect for Lil Easy. I'm one of them, you know, I'm like, man, I was an Easy fan, man. Let the right. boy, let the boy get in there. But then when yeah. I seen you, I was like, he did a damn good job. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that for a minute. We can't have you on here and not talk about Straight out of Compton. Shout out to my nigga, uh, uh, what's his name? Well, OG uh, Two Talk. What, what oh, is yeah, it? Oh, um, Compton Menace. Compton Menace. Oh, man. That's my yeah, nigga. He, he be on here a lot. That's he my guy. real one. Solid, yeah. solid, OG, solid. Is it two-tone? Yeah, yeah. yeah two-tone. that's my boy, man. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about it, man. Like, 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 how was it like working with those guys? So just to be clear about this, right? I was number 7,001. Mm. Wow. They auditioned people all over the world, right? So. Wait a minute. What number was Look easy. I have no idea. Did Probably he even three. get to, I want to get <laughs> For real. You know what I mean? It, it like, had to be a lot to that, though, because mm-hmm. they really was trying to get it right. And I know they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, acting is, um, it's not as easy as it may seem. You know? I meet people all the time who be like, man, I can act. Cap. <laughs> Cap. In the words of the great takeoff. Cap. You know what <laughs> I mean? And it's just not as easy as it seems. You know, like, true, like, if somebody would have fucked it up, it should have been a little easy, if that makes sense. Like, if he should have had the opportunity to mess it up if somebody was going to mess it up. Right. That's hard. I like that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But F. Gary Gray, I mean, when you think about it, he ain't never missed. He probably That's got right. 11 like or 12 movies. He ain't never missed. Straight classics. A lot of his, I mean, you, when you think about it, Friday was his first movie. Wow. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Amazing movie. You understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So... He take it real serious. Like he wasn't sold on O'Shea Jackson Jr. wasn't sold on him wow. at all. What did you he see? Had in How did you know his that? Ass off because he really? told me straight to my face. He said just because he looked like you. Because I had to do a bunch of chemistry reads, right? Like after they casted me, I had to do a bunch of different reads with a bunch of different drays, a bunch of different ice cubes. Because it was like they wanted to see the camaraderie for real. Mm-hmm. So. I chose, like, I thought he was great before I even knew that he was Cube's son. You know, it was obvious that he yeah, looked he a lot looked like Cube. Like, right. But I, I still didn't know because we was just in the audition phase. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? So um, I did think he was great. I thought he was natural. See, a lot of people don't know. He went to school. He went to USC for screenwriting. He trained with Susan Batson. I don't know if y'all know who that is, but, like, she, like, a celebrity to actors because wow. she's one of the gods, you know what I mean? When it comes to like acting coaches, she dope as a motherfucker. So he trained with her for like two years. Like he, he really had to go hard mm-hmm. and able to, you know, for, for him to be able to like really get that role. Like they, man, listen, they might play that nepotism shit with them white people, but they was not playing that with shit with Q. Men? No, man. He better show wow. us. Wow. So when, what, 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 what made you, cause you, you, you and him kind of, you know, y'all, you and O'Shea Kelly, yeah. y- you know, y'all hung like, what made you pretty much tight with him on the set? He's just a real nigga. You know what I mean? And like, a lot of people get that confused with like being a street nigga. And he, not that at all. Not from the streets, none of that, you know? Genuine. But yes, just genuine. And always him, he never gonna be different you know what I'm saying like he just always the same person and he just always gonna be Shay and he just super cool like like once we figured out that we was kinda in the cool stage when we were still doing these chemistry reads cause this shit went on for about a week mm. that nigga was like you ever been to Barry's <laughs> like what the fuck is Barry's it's like the pizza spot I'm like Never even heard of Barry. She was like, nigga, you never had, nigga, we going now. <laughs> and he was like, that's like saying you never had in and out I'm like, what the fuck is in and out You know what I mean? It was my first time in California. I don't know about none of this. Yeah. I was like, nigga, you never had in and out Come on, we leaving right now. You know what I mean? And it's hard. Ever since that car ride, we just been joined at the hill. Wow. And was Barry's really brother. good? Yeah, it was fire. They got like this lobster pizza. It's, and I don't even really fuck with lobster like that. Like, Because y'all know lobster really got famous on the fluky style. Y'all know this, right? Mm-mm. 
So in the 60s, well, in the 50s and 40s, they used to, you know, when they were sending all the gangsters to, to like Alcatraz and all of this shit, they was giving them bottom feeders, you know what I mean? Shrimp, lobster, crawfish, shit like that. Just shit that they could just go fish for and just give it to them. Real cheap shit. So when they got out of jail, when they started making these um, these restaurants and these fronts and shit to wash their money, they put lobster and, and shit in there as a joke. And jacked up the prices because they never thought nobody would pay for it. Yeah. But they did it like as a joke. It's right. like the same thing as us putting ramen noodles on a, on a menu and say it's forty five dollars. Like it's that type of shit. So that's really how it became a delicacy in like in wow, like in like the sixties. You know what I mean? Yeah, like as a joke. I, mean, I, know that. I actually like that, man. But mm-hmm. going back to like just the set, like when you. I interviewed uh, B, uh, BG Knockout, mm-hmm. and he was telling me that one of the things that he didn't like about the movie was the way it depicted Easy E in that house when 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 you were in that house on that scene where the house got smaller and he moved and downgraded it. Scene uh-huh. it was a smaller house. It was uh-huh. a. And they say that part never did happen that way, and, right. and and they had issues with the way it was being depicted just because of who Easy E is and what he right. meant to them, because that was a partner. Right. So, like when you was playing these parts, did anybody ever say anything like that to oh, you? Oh, of course. Um, God rest his soul. But Layla was there for the whole thing. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. And um, you know he he started the group above the law. So originally, Easy um used to score his dope. From from Layla, right? But his cousin had just got killed by some other blood niggas. And, you know, Layla was a blood and shit. So he was like, kind of felt like he was setting himself up fucking with him. So he was like, meet me at the studio. And that's where we could do our business. This is how easy ended up meeting Dre. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because Layla always kind of thought Dre was a little, like he wasn't fucking with what Dre was on at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, cause even though he was solid, you know they they had the little the, the shiny shit, and they was doing a little different. Like they was oh, on they a different was over time. They were in them spandex, nigga. Yeah, they they was, they was, they I was, told Lonzo about time. that. I said, Lonzo, <laughs> you had Dre over there in them damn spandex, and yeah. Easy Neal were laughing at him at the end. Right, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, uh, what was so, the name of that crew? World class records. World class records. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So you know. Layla wasn't really fucking with that. You know what I mean? It was real street niggas and all that. You know, but Easy. I guess, you know, saw something different in Drake. You know what I'm saying? And was like, fuck it, you know? I invest a little bread, and that's kind of how it all started happening, you know? And um, Layla told me everything, bro. He told me everything, everything, real stories, you know? But I think people have to understand that when you're making a movie, some of the shit is visual. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's hard to say a motherfucker rich and they still got the same house. How we gonna show that for real? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I think it's important sometimes to um, you know, show people visually how a man must feel inside. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, there was a lot of shit though that couldn't go in the movie. Like for instance, they uh they they first um album release party for Straight Out of Compton. They wouldn't let them niggas in. They was like, you guys are dressed like gangsters. It was yeah. like, nigga, what the fuck? Like, did you not get the memo? <laughs> like, all of these people are here to see us. They're like, we're, we don't care. We, we're not letting you movie. in. I know, right? It was yeah, a bunch of shit they couldn't right. go in. There. So they ended up going to a restaurant, like, down the street, turning up the restaurant. You know what I mean? That bit turned into a party. Wow, I seen you kick that one down. How hard was that to do that scene when you when the battle round came at first? Like, yeah. how hard was it for you to jump on that, run from the dog, all this shit? Listen, what the hell was going on? You, you, like, you, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm like, I've been waiting for this shit my whole life. You dig what I'm saying? So, um... At first, Gary was like, you know, how do you feel about everything? You feel like you need a stunt dude? I was, I was like, about to say, hell no, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what we need that for? You know what I mean? It was like, well, we already have a stunt guy for you. That, that nigga making free money today. God damn it. You know what I mean? I did everything except jump from roof to roof. Because, yeah, you know, if I yeah. fuck around and break my leg, I, you know what I mean? Then the whole movie is on hold. But I was like, man, I got this. And he was like, well, let's just test it out and see what you would do naturally. Mm-hmm. I said, well, this nigga behind me. Because, like, you could... Like when he, I guess, uh, 
I don't even know how to say it. I, I, I want to say pretend, but that's not the right word. When he leans into it like we about to pull a jack move on you. Yeah. You know, real street niggas know. I looked at him and was like, okay, I could totally dismiss you. That's why I turned my back on him. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? But when it was like, if you react naturally, what would you do? I was like, I would push this nigga out the way. And yeah. Just f- 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 and I, I made up the route. You know what I mean? Wow. I made up the whole route, you know? It's hard, man. Yeah, it was... I loved it, man. Thank it you so dope. much for that movie, man. Like, that that's a hard... Man, I watch it. It's on It's on the set yeah. all the time. I watch that yeah. a lot, I bro. I like I'm that. over and over again. She we, got, like we, got, we got our daughter to... She loves it now. Yeah, yeah, that's man. That's what she watched. You did a great job. I think, I think they made the perfect choice, bro. What? You know what's some bullshit? Every time I watch that movie, I cry like I don't know what's gonna happen. Why? Why? I have no idea. What like, part? We're talking when he died? Yes, like, yeah. because, I mean, we was really giving it up in the moments. And it almost became funny to us that we was giving it up so hard that we was making other people cry. You know what I'm wow. saying? Like, like when Yella gave me that tape and he run out of the out of the, mm-hmm. out of the hospital room, he broke down off camera. Wow. We was giving it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it was Because you put your mind uh, to that's how it was back then and how he must have felt. You yeah, have to be was, in all that emotion. That was too real. Miss Kim, the, Ice Cube wife, she just got up and left. She said, fuck, I don't see how y'all doing this shit. Fuck this. What's your favorite part of the movie? Yeah, that's what I was about to ask you. Yeah. It got to be the hotel scene. For, yeah, for when many you come reasons. out with the gun. Yeah, for many yeah, reasons. Yeah. For one, um... I saw Gary put that shit together. Like, they was mad at him that day because he was like, in the script, it just says, hotel party. Wow. You know, because they, they okay. told me about all kinds of different shit and, you know, how Yella and Easy had this, like, competition happening. Like, it was so crazy. Like, both of them had both uh, slept with 10 women mm-hmm. that day, and they was, like, having, like, a contest, right? So... <laughs> The bus was about to pull off and they had this chick running. Easy, easy. So he, he said, stop the bus. That nigga looked at yelling like, gotcha. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, that's the type of time they used to be on. You know what I mean? They would come to the hotel and the hotel was already packed and shit. So they was like, how do we show this tastefully without taking too much time, whatever. So it took Gary literally like five hours to stage it. Wow. You know, and then Dre came through there and was like, "Nah, this wouldn't be like this. Everybody who came in here would have you took that out and you know, nah, it was, it was going down in this bitch, you know." So after he set the stage for us, you know, um, Gary was like, "All right." So he threw us all in the room and was like, "Everybody just get comfortable. Like, do what you would always do." The only thing that we knew we wanted to have happen was that we wanted it to be a one shot, and we wanted to get Yella having sex. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because yeah. you know he ultimately ends up jumping into the porn business. Yeah, he did. Right? That's right. So, um, yeah, they he, he just his mind just worked. I mean, for five hours. How was right? it? Go ahead, go ahead. So we get to um we get to to the end part, right? And he goes, You can say whatever you want. What? What? <laughs> what? That's why you kind of preoccupied with some real nigga dick. That's that's some shit a New Orleans nigga that's would right. say. And you know what I mean? And everybody knew at that point. He was like, oh, yeah, the New Orleans came out you right there. But w- what was even more beautiful was that after we had ran the scene a couple times, you know, O'Shea went to Gary and was like, this would be the perfect Bye Felicia moment. Because a lot of people, uh, Gen Z don't know that Bye Felicia comes from Friday. They just right. see that shit all over the internet and be Bye Felicia, everybody, you know? So they had no idea that it came from Friday. So wow. as like a love letter to his pops, he was like, this is the perfect moment he did that. for me to do it. Yeah, and he just palmed old girl head and was like, Bye, Bye Felicia. Felicia. Yeah, my and and it was just a natural reaction from everybody because nobody really knew what he was going to do. But he really palmed that girl head and put the house <laughs> like, nah, that shit is crazy. See, my favorite part of the show was when you had to go in the studio to rap for the first yeah. time. <laughs> that was my favorite part. And the way how they did you. Yeah. And did you actually like go in, because did they put his voice over it or was no, that no, all no. you? That was all us. Even even like the, the music that you're hearing, we worked with this guy named Harvey. Like, oh my God. Hats off to Harvey because... Gary didn't believe that he could do it, but he was like, no, nah, I think I could take the actors and like remake all the music. That's for all. sure. That's all. You know, even like the album covers, everything you see is all our picture. Like it fucked us up. But we mm. had to, like during pre-production, we had to re-record the album. We had to like do all of that. And for me, it was like, oh man, it was a big step, you know? Cause being from New Orleans, it, you know, I yeah. obviously I can't go talk like myself. Right. You see what I'm saying? But I know I hit the nail on the head cause everybody was like, you, 
Nigga, I had niggas banging on me and everything. Nigga, where you from, nigga? Wow. Where, nigga, you, 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 you easy son, right? Like, wow. No, I wanna, nigga, I actually, I'm from he- New Orleans. I, <laughs> I, I just I want to hear a bit. Can you do uh-huh. it? Can What's you that? do What, the, the song? accent? The, the song. Which song uh, was it? Yes. Oh, wait. I was going to ask you which one was like a rapper song. Your favorite song. That's the first song he did. Um... Cruising I know, down the, the street, street in yeah, my yeah, 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 that but one. You know, it was they say cruising. <laughs> yes. I had to learn the song in easy voice, then learn how to fuck it up naturally. Which wow, was, that's, that's what awesome. I was like. How could you do that in his voice? Do, that's bro. crazy. How long did it take you to do that? Well, you know, it's funny is that like I always would like mark the gangsters. That we saw on TV, like, you know what I mean? You acting mm-hmm. like a little bitch right now. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah. all of that, just yeah. watching these people, because in New Orleans, we like we thought it was hilarious that they pronounced the full word. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but it was yeah, yeah. real gangsters. So I would always mock them, like, as a child. You know what I'm saying? So I think it kind of helped condition my mind to, like, take it serious. You know what I mean? Because I would just be playing at first, but then... You know, because I be working on my ass. Boy, I say, Dre, you know this shit ain't gonna never work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, man. Thank you know what? I loved it, man. You know what part in the movie I was really angry at, though? And you tell me if that has ever happened to you in real life. Mm-hmm. Is when y'all were in the studio, y'all came outside and y'all was out there and then police pull up on y'all. It happened to us that day. Wow. Tell me about it. Um, It went exactly like that. Y'all got somewhere to be? Yeah, I'm telling you, it was yeah. just like that. That like, day, where were you? Not on set, of yes. course. On set. Absolutely. Absolutely. Real policemen pull up Real on y'all. Real police. What y'all got going on out here? Like, the fuck? We was, we was confused. We thought it was a joke. Like, it was, it was super confusing. I mean, just three days ago, I got pulled over in my driveway. <laughs> Motherfucker telling me, oh, we just checking to make, checking what? Mm-hmm. Why are you harassing me in my neighborhood? Ain't it crime to fight? Yeah, but you, I know what where you fuck? at, though. I know where you at. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, shout out to Deion Sanders. He left our up there because he knew yeah. it was time to go. It, yeah. it just, you just got to, your brother up there. Yeah. yeah. And you know what I'm saying? I'm just no. talking in code. No, 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 I get it. <laughs> but I get at it. the end of the day, just you got to be careful wherever you at when it's when it, when them street lights go off. You know right. what I'm saying? Nah. But it was it was broad daylight. That's the trip part I of know. Was about three I o'clock know. in the afternoon. And I, t- I, I ain't gonna lie, I went off on their ass. I I'm told pretty them, sure. Because they got a 7 Eleven close to my yeah. house. Right? It's about, I don't know. I know exactly where it's at. Yeah, tops, tops five minutes. From I know my house. where it's at. Bro. Right by, I've right been by, pulled by, over maybe seven or I eight times say. in between that 7 Eleven in my house. Mm-hmm. I said, let me know if the cartel is operating in my neighborhood so I could make sure my children ain't, it's a ain't You passed around. by a school right going mm-hmm. right there. I the know school that. is in my backyard. I, I know many, exactly where you at. I'm how many you. of y'all are in that neighborhood? Not many. Nah, it ain't a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't a lot of us. I live right around the corner from uh, that house that Kyrie was trying to build, but they gave him a hassle about the, the county yeah, line yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know because I mean? they're trying to keep him out. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna get, okay. Let me get you back on on spot here. Uh, did you ever meet Dr. Dre? And when you did, oh, absolutely. what did you get? What did you get from the conversation that him or Cube or Ren or Yellow just just being around them original guys? Like, what did you? Anything stick that that they gave you? I mean, to be honest, everything, bro. They was there every day. Oh, they was there every day. They was not fucking around. <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> because uh, Dre, listen. Dre was very adamant about um, making sure the essence of everything was right. And, like, mm-hmm. some shit you just wouldn't, wouldn't know, like, if he wasn't there, you know. But um, he also was behind it. Like, he was down to put his money up, you know, because I think originally we probably had, like, maybe, like, $24 million to make the movie. He put in some of his own money. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? He right. was like, Dre, do we really need the helicopter? You know, he was like, <laughs> was there a helicopter there when I ran from the police in the Ferrari? Yeah. So why are you asking me the stupid ass question? And then they, wow. well, you know it's gonna. Why are you asking me about money? It, it was just like he was telling billionaire bitch. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? like don't how, play with me. That's how he was handling it. Wow. But it was like this shit is real, man. Why y'all trying to take it away from us? Like it's, it's you know real. Yeah. Like I, that's the whole game. Like man, just to see you nail that man and and get that that whole. Did DOC come on the set? Yeah. You know that's my guy. That's my dog. I was with him for the. Uh, Lions Cowboys game. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we was together. So, so how, that's my dude. How was it when he was checking everything out? Yeah, he's solid. That's my nigga. He's man. a solid one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just and that's the, the the thing about the OGs, bro. They what you see is what you get. Yeah, they yeah. really solid. You know yeah. what I mean? Cube really a ball buster in real life. I used to be like, oh, it's about to go down. He'd be like, nigga, it ain't going up. <laughs> <laughs> man, Cube, can we chill? Hell no, I got kids your age. You can hang out with them. <laughs> that's I real. That's real. real. That's real. 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 That's it. But he, you know, always would tell me, like, you know, if you ever need anything, I got you. Like, come to me first before you, you know, go to these people. You know what I mean? And, yeah, he always he always been a stand-up guy, man. Wow. So, but um, how did you get in? I know earlier you said you switched friends, mm-hmm. and that's the reason why you, get, you got into acting. But how did you really get into acting, though? So. And did you go to school for it? Sort of, right? Because I heard about this acting class on the um, on the radio. And me and my partners kind of joked about it and shit, but they was like, nah, nigga, really, like, you should do it, you know? So um, I was in this space at the time where, like, a lot of shit was going on around me, you know? And my sister always used to be like, that's them niggas you hang around, you know? Mm-hmm. But she used to hang with people who were... Slacks and shit, and you know them I mean? blouses, and like, where are you finding these people in New Orleans? Like, where the fuck are you meeting these people? So, behind it all, you know, even though I think it was like, I, I don't think it was nothing I thought that I would ever take serious. I just right. wanted to meet some new people who wasn't into what I was into, you know. So, um, I ain't gonna lie, I really, I went and really fell in love with that shit, and it was like an eight week class. Five weeks into that shit, I had an agent. Did you? So that's all you, that's the only classes you did, just that? Well, no, 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 no. I'm just checking. I, 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 I still do classes. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I teach classes sometimes. Like, I, after I leave here, I'm thinking about going to stop through an acting class just to, like, I like to stay sharp. You know what I mean? And, like, because there's no such thing as being the best actor. And sometimes teaching people, I learn things. You did shy, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and But you also, being from New Orleans and doing that, mm-hmm. what's the similarities between Chicago and New Orleans? Uh, well, it's a lot of killing. So there's that. <laughs> you know, let's let's not just run over it like we don't all know yeah, the sure, elephant in the room. Sure. Yeah, I know that, but, but at the same time, like it's a real place. I was looking for something love. positive, Jason. No, God no, dang. no. I mean, you know. But the gangs are different. I ain't gonna lie. Like, Y'all don't have the same gangs in. No, nah, we don't have gangs in New Orleans. Right. It's everybody too much for self. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I ain't gonna lie. Fuck me up when I first moved there. I was walking and they had like this interactive billboard on the Walgreens that was like 88 people shot over the weekend. I was wow. like, 88? Yeah, 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 yeah. But while I was doing research for the role, right, because my thing was, not was, my thing is, whenever you do something that represents, you know, a culture, you need to put your best foot forward for real. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. because these people really take it serious. So my thing was, if I mess this up, at least Chicago would know that I tried my best, you yeah, know? So yeah. I remember like on Easter, I'm in somebody's backyard eating barbecue and shit with these people. Like, you know what I mean? That's like they were seeing me. We seen Jason at, at, at JJ's Fish. Right. We seen Jason mm-hmm. at Jerk Villa. Yeah, because I'm outside. I'm trying to learn y'all. I'm trying mm-hmm. to feel this. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. You do Harold's Chicken and all that? All of that. All Man. of that. I ain't going to lie. At that same JJ's, I, I seen some fuckery and was like, I need to really be watching myself out here. Because I ain't going <laughs> to lie. You know, I ain't no bitch ass nigga. So I know how to move and what it is. But I seen some shit blew my mind, right? So I'm... <laughs> I'm going in there to go get my chicken. And they got this lady who ran in the gas station right quick. And she came, ran outside. I was like, oh, Lord, they took my car. Damn it. My baby in the car. What? Why do these dudes drop the baby off <laughs> at like a bus stop? They don't care. A couple of blocks down. I saw that car in a movie. And everything. Bloom. <laughs> I dro- saw that in a movie. Oh, yeah. oh, in real life. In movie. I couldn't believe it. I said, these niggas different. Different. <laughs> I saw <laughs> these that in a movie. Different. But Chicago is it's an interesting place. You know, it's the first time I ever um 
experienced racism from a brown person. Oh, really? Wow. From a brown person? Wow. Yeah, wow. very confusing. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you do know white people don't like you either. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, why are you treating me like this? This is crazy. Bitch, I got a $60,000 watch on. Just because you take this hotel serious and you're here with your friends. You know what I mean? Like, bitch, I'm, I'm staying in this hotel. You guys are the guests. You know what I'm saying? Well, not the guests, but... You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, y'all came here to party. I'm I'm chilling. So just because I got on some Crocs, I'm, I'm a problem? Like, wow. it's, it was very, very strange. How long did you do that show for? Oof. Shy. Um, I did two seasons, but altogether, I lived in Chicago like three years. Three years? Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that woman here on the floor, the, the Davis girl who what you had your issues with. <sighs> Super clown. I, but at the end of the day... You know God is over everything. Exactly. He so don't, yeah, I might have made some mistakes. Come on now. But God don't. Come on. Yeah, so <laughs> you know he, what I mean? He, so. he, he move you the way you where you need to be. Exactly. So anything that happened, you are man, you are, you're a dope man, you're a dope dude, bro. I appreciate it. So that. everything that happened, God got a paved way for you. Exactly. So when somebody do you wrong, what they meant for you for bad, God will turn it to good. Exactly. That's why to be <laughs> honest, I ain't never, you know, cuz I started like, the more I get closer to God, bro, the more I start to feel sorry for people when they do fucked up shit to Come on now. Know? Come on now. You know what I mean? Like, how fucked up does your life have to be for you to want to see somebody else lose? Come like, on now. That's crazy. That's real. What's that thought process like? You know what I mean? I never went through that while I woke up in the morning and was like, you know what? I got something for the ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I've never felt like that in my life. Like, and just that's pray crazy. for them because not I everybody do. know God. Right. Yeah, not everybody, and even the people who know God might not be at their le the level that they need to be right. knowing God. You know what right. I mean? Right. So everybody's a struggling Christian. Right, right. And everybody deserves grace too. Right. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody perfect. So I don't be tripping. Like, it is what it is. At the end of the day, um, whatever God saved me from, you know, I'm I'm thankful. But what that, did you learn from your situation, though? Because I believe that God put us through things to learn. Absolutely. I learned, for one, that, like, I'm always at work. I used to try to separate the two Jasons. You know what I mean? Like, I got, because I've never had a problem on set. Very professional, very, like, you know, I take this shit serious. You know what I mean? Um, But I, I would get off and want to be off. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to talk about business. Don't approach me in the club and ask me if I come do shit. You know, I don't. I don't want to do none of that. Like, mm -hmm. please let me just be cool. Like, and I don't. I don't mind taking pictures with people. Like, I'm always super nice and shit. But as far as like doing business outside of the workplace, I wasn't on that. I got people that you could talk to. Protocol is set up. Please go through the protocol. Otherwise, your request will be denied. You know, and uh, for one. It's not the right mind frame to be in to help us. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why you see a lot of the people who we consider the greats really don't have much to show for it except for a healthy bank account. Come on now. You know? So I, I started to pay attention like, oh, as soon as I cross the threshold of my house, as soon as I cross that door, I'm at work. It's just what it is. You know, this is what I signed up for. So... The way I conduct myself, how I choose to treat other people, you know, every word that come out of my mouth need to be thought about. Especially yeah. in today's society where a camera or a phone is so accessible and people right. be videoing you. It's on social media. Right. They're selling it, whatever. Right. Let me right. let me take you back down there. Uh, let me take you to my neck of the woods. and. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to you about my boy Birdman, and, and I know you was in that studio with Lil Wayne. So yeah. I'm a big fan of you know uh, Cash Money. Yeah, I also want to know like who was bigger in the '90s, Big Boy Records or Cash Money? Um, I mean, I'm always favor Cash Money. That's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It Why? Is what, Why? It is. What, what, what is the Cash Money? The the end end of the they were just coming like, up at the time too, though. Yeah, that's true, but it's I don't, and it's petty, you know what I mean. But it, it really is petty. But my grandfather had a barber shop for well, still his his name's still on. He don't, obviously don't cut hair no more. But um, I mean, before he stopped cutting, he cut hair there for like fifty six or fifty seven years, and it's right there on on what they call second and D. Okay, in New okay, Orleans, okay. Which is 
right around the corner from the Magnolia. So naturally, they beef with the Calio. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Right, you know, so just from where I grew up and, you know, because I'm from Holly Grove, but like when my mom used to have shit to do, you know, we used to go by the barbershop and that's kind of where a lot of my friends was and shit. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, cash money. It's petty to the devil, <laughs> but, me. But it's cash, cash money, money to, to the, the devil, me, me my boy. Me I'm tapping on my stomach <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, so how was it, man? Was Lil Wayne that? Was he really like? I know you're Mac Man, y'all. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah. I just y'all rocked out. You know, like, like, what was it like being in that studio? And what phase was you with that young, that little young nigga that just, you know, with the, the one the women was really going crazy. Oh, it was a young nigga. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I met Wayne when, uh, I met him, it's crazy, because I met him on his 19th birthday, I think. Wow, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. I know which one it is. Because my cousin could draw his ass off. He's super, super cold with the drawing. And we kind of like, you know, we would see them around and shit, and they speak and quietly, don't nobody know, but Juvenile, my real cousin as well. So Really? Yeah. Shout out to Juvie. Yeah, I, I told you to come on Boss Talk. This, this whole fit to go up, nigga. I told you. <laughs> Little yeah. soldier slim, get in his ear. Hey. I told that nigga. I, 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 can, I can tell him. <laughs> like, like, quit playing. Man, he gonna be like, cuz. Quit playing. But he like, man, <laughs> man no, man, I don't never really do that. <laughs> nigga, we pulling up. It's I'm asking to run this nigga. I'm everywhere down there. It's crazy. So, what's... Before I just blow past that, the building that I was just telling you about, yeah. you know, when my grandpa had the, the barbershop, mm-hmm. uh, Juve got his studio upstairs now. Okay, that's hard. That's yeah, hard. Yeah, Juve yeah. Tuesday, he over there. Bro, he, and he's so dope. Like, a lot of people don't know that he worked with his hands like a motherfucker. He be making yeah. all type of different shit. You know what I mean? Like, he, he cold. You look uh, like a nigga can cook a little bit, too. Who, me? Oh, no, I'm talking about Juve. him. Yeah, Juve. Oh, he official. Juve cook. Especially yeah. on that grill. And I, like, I can look at the nigga and tell. That nigga, like, that nigga look like he might be able to cook a little bit yeah, down there. He, <laughs> listen, listen, he raw. He yeah. definitely cold with it. But, um, damn, what was we Lil about Wayne, Lil oh, Wayne. Wayne. He was the only Wayne. Yeah, so um, my cousin could draw real good, right? My cousin Mike Larry, he... So he drew Mike up, Lowry. Uh, yeah. They got a hell of a name. Yeah. <laughs> and lives up to it. <laughs> um, He, uh... He drew this picture of Ray Janae. Okay. You know, and um, he uh, he was about to give it to Jacita or whatever, and she was like, no, 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 don't give it to me. Come give it to him. So he was like, all right. So, um, yeah, she invited us over to the house and shit. Wayne came to the house, and it was like a very, you know, intimate setting with his mama and shit, and it was, it was chill. So that was my first time meeting him. But then, like, that same cousin who I'm telling you about, he started doing beats. And uh, he was working with this group of producers called The Architects. And they was actually about to get a deal with Cash Money and shit. It was wow. like the whole thing. But Wayne, like the whole, everything from the prefix, the drought, all of that shit. Like I watched that nigga record that shit. Wow, man. GD, shout out to GDP. He put me on the phone with Birdman a few times, man. And to be honest with you, um, man, I'm a big fan of the I'm a southerner, bro. Yeah. From, from Master P. Yeah. J Prince. Right. MC. Pimp C for sure. Don't even trip, nigga. I'm a yeah. Pimp C fanatic. But yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, and Birdman, so just to see those, you know, them, them solid building by Jermaine Dupree, he just yeah. went on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. And that made a nigga feel real good about him because he stepped and put his chest out something. You know, you got to put your damn chest out sometime. You know what I'm saying? I know so that, I just right. love to see us, like you, get up, you know, yeah, you can come to uh, uh, Los Angeles and do a, a easy. There ain't no telling what we might do from down there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, for sh- for sure. It's like, and then it's crazy, you know, because like, I think, you know, like you know how they say, you know, pressure make make diamonds. It busts pipes, for but sure. it also make diamonds. Make diamonds. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and I've I've <sighs> I want to make sure I say this right. I'm trying to set up a system to make sure we reaching in there. Come on and now, go and grab them diamonds. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Because what blew my mind the first time I ever walked on a movie set, I was like, nigga, why didn't they tell me this took hundreds of people to do? What is all these people's jobs? Come on now. Who are the rest of these people? What is the AD? What is the DIT? What Come on is now. these fucking jobs? Why are they not telling us about this? And they're That's important. Real. That's real. You know? So, you know, I even even people behind the camera, there still be diamonds in them situations. I you love know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like... You know, I'm I'm doing what I can to make sure that I'm putting something in place for us to 
to not have to work so hard to find the opportunity. Wow. You know, because you got to work. Hold on. Hold on. Before you get into time. that. Let's go. Because my question here is, you know, being an actor is good and dandy and all. Mm -hmm. But when I think about, I hear about the music industry and rappers and stuff like that. They say right now, they try to own their masters and try to own this and ownership. Right. What do actors do where ownership is concerned? Because y'all don't have masters and stuff like that. Right, right, right. So for us, it's all about IP, right? Like I I was blessed enough to have um, some beautiful minds around me and we started a company called Production Masterminds and that's, that's our whole thing. Think Bank and, well, Think Tank and IP Bank. That's pretty much it because a lot of people, they go sell their intellectual properties and that's what what takes the, the power from What them. is IP Bank and what is... Okay, so like <coughs> a lot of times, mm -hmm. right, like if you're going to invest in a movie, mm -hmm. you're investing into a single intellectual property. Okay. Right? Let's just say the movie is Boss Talk. Okay. Right? And you as an investor have to really believe in Boss Talk because it ain't cheap to make a movie. But now you are betting on that one-off movie doing great. Mm -hmm. There's so much content out here right now that, like, as an investor, it kind of don't make sense to invest that way. So we have it set up more like a record label now where, you know, a record label might have 100 artists, but they know these 10 going to bust and mm -hmm. pay for everything else. You understand what I'm saying? So we give... You know, our our investors the same opportunity to say, hey, instead of just betting on this one film, how about these 12 different kind of pieces of content? Like, I'll give you a prime example. Um, you watch Basketball Wives? I have watched bit. it before. A little, yeah, bit, know, right? a little bit, right? Nah, nah. That ain't never stopped it from being... Keep going. ...in the top five shows Ooh. for the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. That's hard. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if it was up to me and you... We wouldn't have picked that. If that was on the slate, we'd have been like, ah, I don't know about that one. But that bitch bust. Mm. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it, it's smart and it behooves us, you know, as as filmmakers to start thinking outside the box. You know what I mean? Lucky for me, I I grew up under the Birdman's and Masterpiece. Come on, you know, know what I'm so, about being so I'm just, yeah, I'm just I'm just taking the same model and making it fit into into the, the acting world. Do you think that that to be is a good thing to understand. Now, Brandon T. Jackson was on here and he talked about Tubi and, mm -hmm. and some of the moves that they're making over there. Mm -hmm. Fox owns it, right? Where is it at in five to ten years? Is right. it grow, is it growing? Is it grow? Is it, I mean, everybody's on their phone. And yeah. how is it compared to the Hollywood movies? And you see what I'm saying? That. Well, the see, quality and all that. See, this mm -hmm. is this is the thing, right? For somebody who is a real filmmaker and interested in keeping their IPs like me. Mm -hmm. Tubi is the goal because it's an AVI platform, which means advertisement video on demand. So every time you see them commercials, that's where it's coming that from. Right? For like it. just to give you the history on it. Back when cable TV was really popping, they didn't give a fuck if you was watching 106 and Park, Martin. They didn't care. They just knew they was trying to sell this bleach. Mm -hmm. They was trying to sell Pine Tall. And that's where all the money was coming from. So all of the, the network is getting all this commercial money, and that's how they're able to then, you know, fund these different shows. YouTube does the same thing. Exactly. They're another AVOD platform. They about to start doing original content, too. That's and right. And a lot of that's people correct. are under, like, I hate when people use the term, a 2 B movie. No, nah, nigga, you just decided to go in the backyard and shoot a movie with an iPhone. I'm not gonna do that shit. That's real. You see what I'm Jackson. saying? Mm -hmm. Same thing. I'm not. My movie ain't gonna look like that. So stop saying Tubi movie. But you got to think about it. Tubi has come along with. Like I haven't watched Tubi in a while. Mm -hmm. I've been recently. I've been wanting to get back to watch Tubi because everybody's saying the quality is a lot better. But when I was watching it, mm -hmm. it was a lot of bootleg movies on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people ain't got it. Yeah, but it had and, a lot of good and, stuff on there too. Exactly. The first movie I ever watched on Tubi was Tombstone. Yeah, and, and oh, really? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, they went licensed some classics. You know, <laughs> they so. got all the older stuff too, like all the mm -hmm. the husbands of Hollywood and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So with mm -hmm. Kevin Hart and them, so mm -hmm. there are some good stuff on there that I. I watch and it's just cool to watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They actually have this great show. Y'all got to check it out. It's called Borders. Mm. It's about like some black kids from the hood that get I an opportunity to go it. to a boarding school. Yeah. 
Is so, it a TV series or a movie? TV series. Yeah. Okay, no, I don't know. And see, that's also where the bread at, too. Mm-hmm. TV series. Everybody's moving to this TV series now. Right. And I, 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 COVID did that to me. Exactly. Because everybody's in front of TV too long. Yeah. How many times you go watch Straight Outta Compton? People be having the nerve to come to me and be like, when y'all doing a straight out of Compton too? Dude. Nigga, I hope never. I died in the first <laughs> I don't know if you forgot. You know what I mean? But that's that's how much people want content. People want episodic content. They don't want it to ever die. But then another thing I think I've always wanted to ask the actor this question because I've watched movies and you know when you die and you're in a casket and stuff, is there any, any sort of horror feeling to that? Like when yes. you you look and you see yourself like who it's wants to see that and family weird. members watching that movie and like your mom and it's like I would never want to see my child yeah it's super weird it's super 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 weird I mean the first episode of The Shy right when um when Coogie dies and mm-hmm. he, we, we do the funeral bro seeing Jack King face on that shirt Fuck me up. Seeing him lay in that casket, fuck me up. I'm talking about a lot of what you're seeing is not acting. It's real. You know what I mean? Because it bring you to them times because life is so short. And it's like, that shit be happening so fast. Mm -hmm. You know? So when you peek over that pew and you, I mean, oh, man. When you lean over that podium and you see a nigga that you really know. Oh, man. Back up. Crazy. You know, and some directors use that. Like when we did the movie Detroit, they didn't give everybody the whole script. Oh, so right? you can be surprised. Bro. So when they come down them steps and they see me laying on the floor, they was like, <gasps> they didn't even know I got killed. It fucked them up. <laughs> it was fucked them up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so yeah. Jacob Lattimore, that, that, that face that he had, that was all real. All real. It was wow. all real. All right, I'm going to get him out of here, but I need to know your top three actors of all time, mm-hmm. dead or alive. Ooh. Any genre. Top three. And you got to come back because Ooh. I know you have a lot more stories oh, to yeah, tell. Oh, yeah, you, you, you oh, going to be, course. anytime you got you something know, going. in this thing. You got to sure. come see me, man. Next time, I'm going to bring a tent. That come on with it. You <laughs> stay right here, <laughs> nigga. Oh, yeah. Nah, top three actors of all time. Yeah, dead Damn. or alive. Damn, this is hard. Um, I mean, definitely got to go Denzel. Okay. Oh, Denzel. Definitely got to go Denzel. Um, y'all know who Vincent D'Onofrio is? Tell me a movie. Uh, he was Gomer Powell in Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. that's my guy. Um, number three. Whew. Probably Viola Davis. Viola <laughs> Davis. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. I was like, at least he gave, he gave a woman. I was happy about she that. Co. I'm talking about. I love her. Because, you know, a lot of acting is, like, about those moments alone, you know? And we, we all know that she got the famous cry snot situation. Yeah, yeah. A lot of women is just afraid of that. They run from that that um, that um real shit. That, mm-hmm. And you know she really mean? cold with that. They run from that, bro. But, and you know, when so, I loved her even more, because I loved her, but, you know, when I loved her, Woman King. Yeah, she was dope in that. To see her go from playing certain kind of roles yeah. to that woman. Yeah. I never even knew she had a body like that. <laughs> she, wow. she doing it. Now that I did not miss. <laughs> but yeah, but like, um, How to Get Away with Murder? Mm-hmm. Crazy. Crazy dope. I mean, she just has, uh, she she give it up. Let me ask she you this, and, and we about to wrap this up. Lafayette, Louisiana, New mm-hmm. Orleans. Mm-hmm. Who got the best food? New Orleans, hands down. Mike and Trout. Down. Then Lafayette. Yep. But isn't it the same food as Louisiana just... No, they compete. They compete, yeah, but I'm... New Orleans what makes y'all special? Uh, we we the originators. It started there and went up. <laughs> 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 now, in Lafayette, it's, it's a little bit more boring. So they ain't got much to do but cook. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, you know, yeah, they, they got them Shirley's out there. See when they got this little extra right here over the elbow? Watch out. Do you feel like you was blackballed in the industry? Uh, I don't. I feel like, I feel like um, giants don't see giants when they look in the mirror. So uh, sometimes you got to watch your step. You fuck around and step on somebody. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. And uh, <laughs> I just, I wasn't paying no attention to that. I was like a toddler. 
You know what I mean? I was I was fresh out the streets into the industry and had no uh, desire at all to come in the industry and make friends. Wow. That wasn't my shit. I feel like I had already picked my friends. You know how you watch TV and you be like, oh, I, I like this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like when I met James Franco, when I met Tom Hanks, I was like, I knew y'all was going to be like this. Cool. I fuck with y'all. Same thing with Cube. I knew you was going to be. You know, so other than that, I had no desire to, you know what I mean? And then it used to be weird. Like, I remember being at Jerry Breckheimer's house, right? And he invited me to this party and shit. And um, I went to introduce myself to somebody. And I was like, how you doing? I'm Jason Mitchell. And he was like, don't be an asshole. We know who you are. I was like, Nigga, this is the part where you say your name. You know what I mean? What the fuck? Did you tell him that? No, I didn't. You both but, to. But, but it was because, like, that. It, but it was a glitch moment for me. You and know you what I mean? Because it. at the end of the day, it's like, man, I have no desire to be friends with you. Yeah. At all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. like, part of me wanted to be like, well, fuck you then. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, but I didn't want to make a scene. So I was like, fuck it. After a while, I just started walking around looking at shit. I mean, that bitch looking at art. I was like, this nigga got cowhide coasters in his house. This is <laughs> ain't this some shit. But, yeah, man, I was, I was on my own time, you know, and I, um, I think I had a lot of like, I had a lot of trouble separating myself from what I used to be. Okay. You know, I also learned that about myself in therapy. People used to be like, you know, my therapist would tell me, you talk about what you used to do a lot, you know, and you talk about who you used to be a lot. Like you, you've come so far and you've changed so much. Like, why are you afraid to let that part go? You know, and I never did want to switch up on people and, Go Hollywood and all of that shit. Like I remember, I used to be at these Hollywood parties in a fucking suit and shit, being like, "How long I gotta stay? Because I'm trying to get out <laughs> this and I'm trying to go meet my partners." You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And that it was just a very naive way to look at things. You know what I mean? The world is so big and there's so many opportunities. You know, but um, they didn't want to change. Yeah, and I have a hard time trusting white people. And I used to <laughs> tell them right in their face, "I'm not gonna trust you until you say nigga in front of me." Cause you be fucking with a bad. <laughs> I used to make him do it too. Like I ain't, I ain't playing. You know what I mean? And they like, did. I, yeah. He's wow. Like, Jason, I can't say that. Yes, you can. You do it when I'm not around. Stop playing. Wow. Say you it to my face right now. That's crazy. It. And then we can be friends. Wow. Jason Mitchell, one of the <laughs> dopest interviews. A boss talk one on one. The nigga was dope as I thought he was gonna be too. Hey. Some niggas, oh, let, me, some niggas too. let me down. I ain't done yet. Some niggas let me down, but the nigga came through with a nice interview. Thanks to Jason Mitchell. I'm saying that before you get your ass off here. No, no, no it's cool. Look, I, I ain't. I like, enjoyed it, actually, man. Can, is it crazy if I ask? No, you man. Like, that's fine. We go, I'm gonna give you another one, but I got this question right, first. Also I was researching something and I saw this came up, and right. I'm just going. It, up to you if you want to answer this. Yeah. I just want to know what the outcome was. Uh -huh. I saw where you had that altercation on Delta right. Airlines. Mm -hmm. And it was because you had purchased a seat, but they gave the seat to somebody else. Is that what it was? Well, yeah, they, they just double booked me. Just double booked but, you. I mean, so was, what happened at the end? Because you walked off, but did they make it right? Did they apologize? Did they? I'm going to tell you this. I had a case on them. And I told... Okay, I want the world to pay attention to this, mm -hmm. right? Because um, I think people try to make things something that they're not. So I'm going to put all the facts there and let people assess them however they want to, right? So I bought the ticket. The ticket was a lot, you know what I mean? I, I don't exactly remember how much it was, but I know it was more than $9,000, which I thought was fucking incredible for a plane ticket. I was like, what the fuck? You know Where what I mean? Where were you going? I was going to Vegas for um the the last Floyd Mayweather fight. And it was that much? Yeah, because I'm a huge Floyd fan, but I bought it the same day. That, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, you know, but they surprised me with the tickets and shit. Showtime had gave me the tickets, and it was like, all you got to do is get yourself there and back. We got you with the rest of the stuff, you know? We'll let you stay at the signature. We'll give you these tickets. I'm like, Beautiful. But I didn't know the fucking ticket was going to be that high. But I guess it's like, it evens out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you got fucking $15,000 tickets, it's like, whatever. So, um, I get double booked. And, you know, that ends up happening because I was just, I was pissed. I wasn't going to let them just handle me no any kind of way. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I feel like I'm a very... Uh, 
I'm a loyal customer. You know what I'm saying? And the airport got a funny way of acting like they doing you a favor. Motherfucker, I paid for this. You see what I'm saying? So handle me like a paying customer, you know? So, um, you know, that happens or whatever. Because if you were of another I was complexion, that I was wouldn't like, happen. Fuck, I wish I wouldn't have overreacted the way I did. Okay. But they put out an article with a lot of... Uh, fraudulent things in it mm. so I was like mm. so I went to my agency like and my lawyer like hey I want to sue these people I got a case on them Wow, you know what I mean and it was like mm, well they're going to wear you out in court I don't give a fuck you know how good it's going to look for the black community when they say Jason wins this battle that I was right it's going to be big for us it was like well Jason you know huh. well Jason you know huh and I'm like, why are y'all riding so hard for Delta? They was like, well, we represent Delta. Oh. Oh. Even you hired. Damn. UTA, the agency, represents Delta. They're one of their clients. Who the fuck you think more important? You Delta? Listen. In what case have you ever seen where no police get involved, nobody come out and say, he did this to me? None of that shit. But you get dropped from the agency, the PR ain't fucking with you no more, none of that. Back up, all the way from him. Mm. Like I said, it's very rare that a giant can look in the mirror and see a giant. You don't know mm. what the fuck is happening. Boy, do you know what I mean to the black community? That's real. We used to have all kind of fucked up conversations. I remember one time, I, cause you know, I used to, um, I used to, like, I ain't gonna say used to, cause I'm a, I'm a hell of a grill man, right? But I uh, I have my own recipe with char grilled oysters. So Essence came around, and I'm like, yo, you know how dope it would be for us to make a mock, like food truck, right? And either give oysters away or sell oysters or whatever. But I'm actually making them. Like this would be so fucking dope. This is a great way to promote the shy. Mm -hmm. And they looked me right in my face and said, Jason. Essence is beneath you. Nigga, I start ducking. Like, what the fuck, nigga? I'm waiting on a slipper or something to fly. Nigga, you know if you know if these black people heard you say this shit, boy, what the fuck? Are y'all serious? That's, That's real. crazy. Essence is the pinnacle for black people. I don't give a mm -hmm. fuck what you talking about, nigga. That's I could real. never be what the fuck are you talking about? Essence is beneath me is crazy. Real crazy. They That's want the kind you to of be shit a, that they'll tell you right to your face, you, though. They, don't they want you to be a certain way. I they gotta, want you to fit into right. this box. You just not, you I'm just, not here yeah. for that. I'm going you know to. what I mean? They got a weird, a weird way of, of looking at people. Of, they got a weird way of making you feel like you need them. Man. My nigga, nigga never stopped me on the street and said, when you see Showtime, brother, tell them we... You know, we, we appreciate them oh, for putting you on you. their show. Yeah, they love, they, nigga, they love me. They don't fucking love these companies. But would, would they love you if you put a dress on? Probably. They would love me more, for sure. You want to know something else <laughs> fucked up? you like, what the hell that question the man in the, the, They got a man in the next room who knows this to be facts. I'm about to say it. <laughs> Can you hear me back there, radio? <laughs> say it. The first offer I got after all of this bullshit happened, right? We were shooting this movie, me and Jaquavis Coleman, we were shooting this movie called Everything Is Both. Um, I was on set, I get a call. They say, Jason, uh, uh, you got an offer that came in, straight offer. I say, oh yeah? They say, yeah, it's for a show called P Valley. Mm. I say, yeah? I say, what the ticket like? He said, 70,000 an episode. <laughs> Nigga started getting hot. God damn, full straight offer? They said, yeah, but. I said, oh, fuck. I said, what they want me to do? They said, they, they want you to take it there. I said, oh, man, this ain't, this ain't the way I could come back. Like, I don't have nothing against anybody that, that lives like that. Like, a lot of, uh, everybody know me. Like, I'm, I support your choices, whoever you are. But. I didn't feel like after what had happened to me that it was okay for me that it didn't move into that space. I felt like I was selling out. Come on now. You know what I mean? More money than I ever made in my life. I was in real tears. Am I lying? They and they wanted you to do they wanted you to sell your soul for a jelly roll. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Tough decision. 
I had to walk away from that bag, dog. More money than I ever would have made in my life. You understand what I'm saying? But it wasn't worth it. Not for the people that love you. You know what I'm saying? And not for what you stand for, bro. But I get it. I can I can see the children at school now. <laughs> That's why your mama and your daddy not together because he like boys. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, boys, you know, kids it, it, don't it, give it, a yeah. fuck. They don't care, man. That's the one thing, man. You like I said, man. Just just man. Dope interview, man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk One Hundred One. How can people get a hold to you? You know, I'm really active. I'm really active. Instagram mostly. You know, you can find me at Jason Mitchell actor. It's the real me. Uh, for those who are out there making fake pages, stop being weird and confusing <laughs> people. You know, um, but yeah, I also want y'all to follow my Hollywood BS page too. Okay, I got you. you. Know, yeah, I've seen it. I already yeah, checked check it out. out Hollywood I BS. liked it. I loved it. I'm dropping a lot of gems on there. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think you should drop more, but I loved it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep I want them coming. Hold a flood. I'm, I'm just like that. I tell all if anybody go like, yeah, that's he. Yeah. He want that work because I know already where it's headed. You just said it earlier. Yeah. Five years from now, everybody's on this so much. That's where you're headed. You Facts. got you can do your own network. Facts. Facts. And I'm, Am I I'm right? Gonna, yeah. And I'm gonna keep it coming. I'm gonna give a lot more opportunities too. Because I'm now in the Dallas area. I feel like, you know, Hollywood is moving here. It's definitely moving you know, here. I'm trying to. You see, trying fifty to down in Shreveport, curve. huh? Yeah, yeah, doing his thing, <laughs> doing his thing. He he had an unstoppable level now. That nigga bad. You know what I mean? All that he got to do is keep, keep the train moving. I'm a big 50 Cent fan, man. You goodness. know what? As much as everybody's moving here, I saw an article that said, um, like, the top 50 worst place to live. And Dallas, I mean, Texas was like. Who wrote the on article? The top. Who wrote the article? But when you was reading, here's the here joke. When you're reading all the comments. People saying that's why all these California people need to stop coming to Texas. <laughs> they was the same. It was all about the California people who keep coming here. Right. And I'm like, dang, that yeah. many? Well, wow. it's. I don't know why people feel like this is one of the worst places to live. No, it's enjoyable, actually. Right, and it's the real black mecca to me. That's why I moved here. You Man. know what I mean? Because I left New I'm York. I'm glad you're here. here. You left New York? Yeah, because New York. You, made, you did yourself a favor, nigga. We got so much room down here. Facts, in exactly. In, in New York was. Oh man, <laughs> you know, and, and then after the COVID, everything was outside and zipped up and still funky. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like, damn. Jason, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. I'll we love you, bro. You I hope you, uh, whenever you got something you're doing, please come back over here. Make Definitely. sure, you know, if we pushing something, you, I mean, Tubi movie, it don't matter, a big movie, <laughs> nigga, because you'll do anything. I see yeah. you working, nigga. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I know already I'm you trying to support us. So I, I definitely want to be a part of that, bro. So don't forget about us, man. I got we you, pushing, man. I got We're going to make it look good, I promise, man. Hell yeah. Check it, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, make sure you check these clips out, man. Coming right at you, Jason Mitchell. Got down, went down, threw down. You better get in there, check this next clip out. Oh, yes, it's yeah. been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And let me tell you.